Shalom. How is everybody today? I pray that you're well. For those who don't know me, my name is Stephanie and I share understandings that I receive by God when I read the word of God. We're going to do a study on the birds and the bees today. And we're going to uh, learn about what God, um, reproduction, uh, asexual and sexual. Um, and it's spoken about in um, John right now. And we're going to read, um, well, let's see, my page got flipped. Uh, we're going to read in John chapter 10 today. And then I'll share with you the understanding. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the door into enter by the door into the fold of the sheep, but climbs up another way, he is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. To him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he puts forth all his own, he goes before them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice and a stranger they simply will not follow, but will flee from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech, Jesus spoke to them because they did not understand what those things which had been saying to them. Jesus therefore said to them again, truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. And if anyone enters through me, he will be saved and I shall go in and out. And, and he, I am the door. And if anyone enters through me, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they might have life and might have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd lays his life down for the sheep. He who is a hearing and not a shepherd, who is not the owner of the sheep because, 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 uh, who is not the owner of the sheep, beholds the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hearing and is not concerned about the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know my own and my own know me. Even as the father knows me, I know the father and I lay my life down for the sheep. And I have other sheep which are not of this fold and I must bring them also, and they shall hear my voice, and they shall become one flock with one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. No one has taken it away from me, but I lay it down on my own intuitive. And I have the authority to lay it down, and I have the authority to take it up again. This commandment I receive from my Father. Therefore arose a division among them, among the Jews, because of these words. And many of them were saying, he has a demon and is insane. Why do you listen to him? Others are saying, these are not the sayings of a demon-possessed man, because a demon man cannot open the eyes of the blind. At this time, the feast of de dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the Pers Parco of Solomon. The Jews therefore gathered around him and were saying to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered him, I told you, if you do not believe the works that I do in my Father's name, these bear witness of me. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give and I give eternal life to them, and they shall never perish, and no one shall, shall ever snatch them from my hands. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hands. I and the Father are one. The Jews took up stones again and, the, and to stone him, and Jesus answered them, 
I showed you many good works from the Father. For which of them are you stoning me? The Jews answered, For, for a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy, because you are being a man and making yourself to be God. Jesus answered them, Has it not been written in your law, I said, you are gods? If he called them gods to whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken, what uh, do you say to him? Do you say to him whom the father sanctified sent into the world? You are blaspheming because I said I am the son of God. If I do do the works of my father, if I do not do the works of my father, do not believe me. But I do them. But if I do them through you, though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know, believe the works that you may know, that you may know and understand the father is in me and I am in the father. Okay, we're going to stop right there. We're going to go to study. The birds and the bees study. Jesus said, If you have seen me, you have seen the Father who sent me, and I and the, fa and I and the Father are one. Jesus spoke in many agricultural references and mentions vines and grafting and becoming one unit. All these references, one can understand when we look at reproduction. Asexual and sexual reproduction are two types plants and animals use to propagate more units or reproduce offspring. Asexual, rep asexual reproduction takes a part of itself away from them and plants it into soil to produce a copy. This is what God the Father did when he sent his son or offspring to save a condemned world from sin and death. Through faith on his son, Jesus, Yahushua HaMashiach. Womb is God the Father's branch he planted on earth and bore, th and, and, bear through, and bore through the seed of woman. Womb was Mary, the mother of Jesus. God sent his son to save a condemned world from death by simply believing on him and faith. The other type of, um, of reproduction is sexual reproduction. And this has two partners that reproduce offspring with two different sets of genes mixed to create a blend of two partners in different combinations each time they reproduce. Differing from asexual reproduction that produces an exact copy of the reproduced offspring, such as Jesus. being God the Father's only begotten Son, and the Word of God references his creation, you and me, as his children, in various colors, sizes, shapes, and looks. To each one of us, that we are the seeds God planted in the field. When Jesus spoke on this parable in Matthew chapter 13, when Jesus had healed the blind man, he first saw men walking around as trees. And this would mean that, and that we have a spiritual connection um, with plants and God, as he referenced many times in the Bible. And we can be grafted together by faith and abiding in God to um, be one. Even a wild shoot that the devil seeded are part of God's flock and must be saved also. This is the freedom and salvation of our loving God who sent a part of himself. Exactly. And who had, who had been given all authority from God the Father who sent him. This beautiful love story is woven together in the plants and animals that we see seeding and growing around us. Only God the creator is capable of sending a part of himself to save the world and he chose to save us.
This is amazing. So let us do our part by, by bringing Jesus to the lost, by sowing seeds of love to those around us on this world that God created, to bring home the lost by sharing light, by shining light on the darkness, by binding and casting out demons with the authority of Christ Jesus. Then, then sh uh, showing salvation to save them. Then, then, then showing them the salvation of Jesus by believing on him so that they can be saved. And praying that God the Father draws his lost back to him so that they can be together with God. As we are his partners, his teammates, and he is the captain, the good shepherd. As he draws, we are his hands and feet that he uses as vessels to have him speak through you, to counsel, set free, to teach, to pray, and to show love to anyone he has planted you next to in this field of life. Even if it's hard, he will strengthen you. When we ask, we receive in faith. For this is the love story of God. Let's pray. Father God, in Jesus' mighty name, thank you so much for this understanding of you and your son, Jesus, that, that you have woven together for us to, to see and, and, and written down in your word. I pray, Father God, for everyone who came to this video, for them to have eyes to see and ears to hear, and for us to be blessed, and for us to grow in more understanding in, in who you are, Abba Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and believe. Amen. Shalom.